The aircraft is designed and operates using the concept that when the engines are started, all systems are normal if the overhead panel, the main panel, the glare shield panel, and control pedestal panels have no striped bar illuminated. No aural warnings are being issued, and the selector knobs are all in the 12 o'clock position. In abnormal situations, the crew will receive visual warnings indicating that a system is not operating normally. The aircraft monitor warning system continuously monitors the condition of the various aircraft systems and shows alert messages and or enunciations to the flight crew to inform the crew about the current system operation status. The color philosophy used to inform the flight crew is as follows. Red for warning conditions, flight envelope, and system limits. Amber for caution conditions, unavailable or invalid data, and miscompare enunciations. Cyan for advisory data, advisory ICUS messages, and pilot selected data. Green for engaged modes, current data, and pointers in normal operating range. White for armed standby modes, status data, status cast messages, scales, and associated figures and labels. Red for warning con amber for caution conditions, unavailable cyan, green, white for armed standby modes, status data, status cast messages, scales, and associated figures and labels. To inform the flight crew regarding aircraft system status, ICUS messages are presented in the upper right corner of the ICUS display in a box known as the CAS field. There are four message levels, warning, caution, advisory, and status. Warning, red color, is used to indicate emergency conditions of an aircraft system or aircraft operation that require immediate corrective or compensatory crew action. Caution, amber color, is used to indicate abnormal conditions of an aircraft system or aircraft operation that require immediate crew awareness and subsequent corrective or compensatory crew action. Advisory, cyan color, is used to indicate operational or aircraft conditions that require crew awareness and may require subsequent or future crew action. Status, white color, is used to indicate information or status messages. That means when the appropriate action is taken, the pilot can make efficient use of the system. The ICUS messages are grouped and presented in chronological order according to their category. The warning category is at the top of the CAS field. Below this category, the system presents the caution, advisory, and status messages. When new warning, caution, and advisory alert messages are displayed, they are presented flashing in inverse video before acknowledgement. The warning and caution alert messages remain flashing in inverse video until manual crew acknowledgement via master warning or caution button, respectively, is pressed. After the acknowledgement, the messages remain in steady normal video at the top of their respective category in the CAS field until a new message belonging to that group appears. Advisory messages will be automatically acknowledged after five seconds when they become normal video. A white end message centered in the line is displayed following the last message. The CAS field includes a status line out of view message display which indicates the out-of-view ICUS messages. The purpose of this status line is to indicate the existence of undisplayed caution, advisory, or status messages and their location relative to the currently displayed messages. 
The Out of View message display includes the number of messages of each level, distinguished by a color, and an arrow indicating the direction of messages of each level, above or below the current window. The Out of View message display, digits and arrow, flashes when there are unacknowledged messages out of view. The right Out of View messages display represents the number of messages out of view below the displayed window while the left out-of-view message digits represent the number of messages out-of-view above the displayed window. An ICUS scrolling function is provided to allow the flight crew to scroll up or down through the active, caution, advisory, and status messages, which do not appear on the display. When the cursor control system focus is on the ICUS, the pilot or co-pilot CCD can be used to scroll messages. Both the inner and the outer rotary knobs on the CCD can be used to scroll messages. An icon shows when CCD is selected and is removed when CCD is not focused on the ICUS. Note, warning messages cannot be scrolled out of view. ICUS message inhibition logic prevents certain messages from appearing during takeoff and approach or landing phases that would otherwise distract the pilots. The inhibition logic uses K codes for specified ICUS messages or groups of messages to prevent their display during the different phases of aircraft operation. Inhibition logic considers the following K codes to inhibit ICUS messages. For example, K3 code messages are inhibited during takeoff after 80 knots of speed until reaching 400 feet of altitude. The following table presents an example of how the CAS messages are presented in the aircraft operating manual. The section column represents the chapter of the AOM. The type column indicates the messages related to this AOM chapter and whether the message is a warning, caution, advisory, or status. The inhibition column indicates the K codes for the dedicated messages or message group. The analog indicators used on the displays present valid data with a pointer in the same color as the respective indicating range. Note, for navigation, the color represents the selected source, which is green for NavAid, and magenta for FMS. Unavailable or invalid data is presented by removing the pointer from its scale. For aviate, air data and deviations, besides removing the data, a red X is added to the indication. The digital indication digits used on the displays for normal operation are presented in green. For navigate functionality, the color represents the selected source for NAVAID in green and for FMS in magenta. Unavailable or invalid data is presented by replacing the digits with amber dashes. In case of an exceedance, the digital indication is displayed in reverse video. The synoptic color philosophy used on the displays present their indications in green to indicate the on status, or in white, to indicate off, or no air, or no fluid flow. Unavailable or invalid data is presented by a dashed symbol. In case of a failed component, an amber X is placed on top of the symbol. Aural warnings are used when the pilots Landing require here. immediate knowledge of the condition without having to look at a visual Landing display here. or indicator. Aural warnings are alert tones, like the single chime and the triple chime. Bells to indicate an engine or APU fire or a cargo smoke detection and voice messages used in systems like TCAS. Increase. Climb. Increase. Climb. And EGPWS. Terrain. Terrain. 
Aural warnings are canceled automatically when the alerting situation no longer exists, or when they are reset manually by the pilot. In the event of multiple alerts, the priority in order of highest to lowest is EGPWS, TCAS, fire, overspeed, and landing gear. Aural alerts sound in a sequence and are never truncated. The electronic display system has two aural warning drivers that operate as master-slave logic and are responsible for generating and prioritizing the aural warnings. In case one aural warning driver is inoperative, the slave aural warning driver will automatically take over. If both aural warning drivers are inoperative, a message will be shown on the ICUS display. There are four levels of aural alerts. Emergency alerts, abnormal alerts, advisory alerts, and information alerts. The emergency alerts are dedicated to level 3 alerts and correspond to an emergency situation, such as an aircraft in hazardous configuration, landing gear, landing gear, or serious aircraft system failures that require the pilot's immediate action. Abnormal alerts are dedicated to level 2 alerts and correspond to an abnormal situation like the single chime for the master caution. Advisory alerts are dedicated to level 1 alerts and correspond to a situation that requires the pilot's knowledge for recognition situations, such as when the auto throttle is deactivated. Throttle. Throttle. Or the altitude alert. Altitude. Altitude. When unintentionally departing the selected altitude. The advisory alert is a single alert signal that is canceled automatically. Information alerts, which are dedicated to level zero, correspond to an information situation, such as when the aircraft is in the takeoff configuration. Takeoff, okay. Or during a trim malfunction. Trim. Trim. A takeoff configuration warning indicates that the airplane configuration is not in a suitable takeoff condition. It is provided through the aural warning system. Such warning is activated whenever the airplane is on the ground, thrust is applied, and at least one of the following conditions is met. Flaps are not in takeoff position. No takeoff. Flap. Any spoiler panel is deployed. No takeoff. Spoiler. Parking brakes are applied. No takeoff. Brake or pitch trim is out of green range no takeoff trim or when the speed brake lever is not in the stowed position no takeoff spoiler more than one warning may be generated if more than one condition is met a test button is provided to allow checking the takeoff configuration when the button is pushed the power levers are simulated to the advanced position. If the airplane is in takeoff configuration, the voice message Takeoff, OK, is generated. If the airplane is not set to takeoff configuration, the aural warning referring to the associated takeoff configuration deviation is generated. No takeoff, spoiler. The stall warning and protection system is a two-stage system designed to warn and protect the aircraft from stall conditions. The first stage of the system provides warning to the pilot that the aircraft is approaching a stall condition by activating the stick shaker motor to each control column, simulating the aircraft buffeting, displaying a low speed awareness indication on the airspeed tape, 
and displaying the pitch limit indicator on the attitude direction indicator of the primary flight display. In normal mode, if speed continues to decrease, the second stage of the stall protection system acts to avoid the stall by actuating the angle of attack limit protection. The angle of attack limit protection is a fly-by-wire function that modulates the elevator within the airplane's angle of attack limits. In direct mode, the angle of attack limit protection is not available, and the stall recovery has to be performed manually by the pilot. The Stall Warning Protection System, SWPS, has a dual redundant architecture, allowing normal operation with only one channel. In case a single SWPS control channel fails, the other operative channel will continue to monitor for a stall situation and the respective ICUS message is displayed. If one shaker motor fails and activates inadvertently, the pilot can deselect that shaker by using the cutout button on the SPS control panel in order to provide continuous stall protection on the other functional shaker. If both channels are inoperative or the stall warning protection system in general has failed, the system automatically disengages and the pilot will be notified by an ICUS message. However, if the malfunction is not detected by the stall warning protection system, it may activate the stall warning and protection measures in non-stall conditions. If both stall warning protection system channels exhibit the same abnormal condition, the pilot must detect the stall characteristics by using other means, such as the low speed awareness indication on the speed tape and or the pitch limit indication on the attitude direction indicator. The Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System, EGPWS, uses Airplane Position, Configuration, and Terrain Database Information to provide the flight crew with increased awareness of the terrain along the projected flight path. The system provides the flight crew with sufficient information and alerting to detect a potentially hazardous terrain situation and thus allow the flight crew to take effective action to prevent a controlled flight into terrain event. The EGPWS is a module contained in the Modular Avionics Unit, MAU number 2, and it is powered via Essential DC Bus number 2. The EGPWS receives inputs from the following systems Air Data System, ADS. Flight Management System, FMS. Global Positioning System, GPS. Inertial Reference System, IRS. Radar Altimeter. Slats and Flaps Control System. The Terrain Clearance Floor, TCF, provides a circular terrain clearance envelope around the airport runway alerting the pilot of a possible premature descent for non-precision approaches regardless of the airplane's configuration. The TCF is active during takeoff, cruise, and final approach, and is based on current airplane position, nearest runway, and radio altitude. The database consists of all hard surface runways of the world, greater than 1,067 meters, 3,500 feet in length, which have a published instrument approach procedure. The EGPWS has six different modes of operation. Mode 1, the excessive descent rate. Sink rate, sink rate. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Mode 2. The excessive closure to terrain. Terrain, terrain. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Mode 3. The altitude loss after takeoff. Don't sink, don't sink. 
Mode 4. The Unsafe Terrain Clearance. It generates three types of RL alerts based on radar altitude, airspeed, and airplane configuration. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Gear. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Flaps. Too low. Terrain. Mode 5. The descent below glide slope. Glide slope. Glide slope. Glide slope. Mode 6. The altitude callouts. 500. Approaching minimums. 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 200. Bank angle callouts. Bank angle. Bank angle. The EGPWS terrain display is designed to increase flight crew awareness of the surrounding terrain in varying density dot patterns which represent specific terrain separation with respect to the airplane. Solid yellow is caution terrain, approximately 60 seconds from impact. Solid red is warning terrain, approximately 30 seconds from impact. High density red dots is for terrain that is more than 2,000 feet above airplane altitude. High density yellow dots is for terrain that is between 1,000 and 2,000 feet above airplane altitude. Low density yellow dots is for terrain that is between 500 feet, 250 feet with gear down, below, and 1,000 feet above airplane altitude. High density green dots is for terrain that is the middle elevation band when there is no red or yellow terrain areas within range on the display. Low density green dots is for terrain that is the lower elevation band when there is no red or yellow terrain areas within range on the display. Light density cyan dots is for terrain elevation equal to 0 feet MSL. In the event of a failure, the EGPWS will generate a message to alert the flight crew. The system uses a dedicated terrain display bus from the EGPWS to present terrain data. If the terrain picture bus has failed, the entire terrain picture is cleared and an amber terrain annunciation is presented. The MFD terrain annunciation is as follows. The labels and its functions are A green terrain is lit when terrain mode is selected. An amber terrain fail is lit when a failure condition exists. A white terrain inhibit is lit when the terrain inhibit button is pressed in approach mode. An amber terrain in A is lit when EGPWS is uncertain of the airplane's position. A white terrain test is lit when the self-test is activated. Some buttons in the cockpit allow pilots to interact with the EGPWS. They are the EGPWS Terrain System Inhibit button. When pressed, in approach mode, it inhibits EGPWS and avoids unwanted terrain alerts in airports not covered by EGPWS database. The EGPWS Glide Slope Inhibit button. The momentary action button enunciator is used to manually cancel glide slope alerts. It illuminates when pressed any time the aircraft is below 2,000 feet radar altitude and will be automatically reset light is off by climbing above 2,000 feet 
or descending below 30 feet. The flap override switch. Guarded. Inhibits triggering flap alerts in case of landings in which flap configuration is different from flap landing configuration. The E-Jets are equipped with the wind shear detection and escape guidance system. This system provides detection and escape guidance in case a wind shear condition is encountered. Dangerous shear winds can result from vertical winds and rapidly changing horizontal winds. Therefore, special shear wind advisories have to be given to the pilots. Wind shear warning alerts are given for decreasing headwind, increasing tailwind, and severe vertical downdrafts. Wind shear caution alerts are given for increasing headwind and severe updrafts. The wind shear system is part of the Flight Guidance Control System and Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System. The EGPWS provides the detection portion of the wind shear system and the Flight Guidance Control System provides the guidance portion. Wind shear detection is only active between 10 and 1500 feet radio altitude during the initial takeoff, go around, and final approach phases of flight, and when detected by the EGPWS. Wind shear caution messages include amber wind shear message on the PFD and a single caution wind shear RO alert. A wind shear warning message consists of a red wind shear message on the PFD and a single wind shear, wind shear, wind shear, RL alert. The wind shear escape guidance mode provides a pitch command to recover from a wind shear to minimize altitude and airspeed loss during a wind shear encounter. Caution. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. This mode is a flight director mode and is activated in the following conditions. Manually, when wind shear warning or caution condition is detected and takeoff go around switch is pressed. Automatically, when wind shear warning condition is detected and thrust lever is set to take off go around position. Automatically when wind shear warning condition is detected and the flight director mode is in take off or go around. In this condition the other flight director modes are canceled and the altitude pre-selected go around and take off modes are inhibited while in a caution or warning wind shear condition. No lateral mode is inhibited while in wind shear mode. The wind shear escape guidance mode incorporates three control logics. The gamma sub mode. The airplane has a positive flight path angle. This sub mode allows the airspeed to build up during an increasing performance wind shear in anticipation of a decreasing performance wind shear. The Alpha Submode. The airplane maintains airspeed when approaching stall conditions. The wind shear protection control logic keeps the airplane angle of attack below the stick shaker firing angle. The Speed Target Submode. The airplane manages the airspeed to prevent overspeed. Pitch up is commanded to maintain the calculated airspeed. Note. Wind shear conditions will not be detected if either EGPWS or the radar altimeter is unavailable. All EGPWS warning functions, including the wind shear warning function, are tested during cockpit self-test prior to takeoff. The self-test is activated using the MCDU test page. During the test, an amber wind shear fail message is displayed on the ICUS. A red wind shear message is displayed on the PFD
and a wind shear, wind shear, wind shear aural message is enunciated. If the wind shear warning function of the EGPWS is inoperative during the test, a wind shear inop aural message is enunciated. The Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System, TCAS, is an independent airborne system which does not rely on air traffic control for control or coordination. It detects unsafe traffic conflicts with other transponder-equipped aircraft and assists the flight crew in avoiding intruders inside a protected airspace. This is accomplished by interrogating the Mode A, Mode C, and Mode S transponders, tracking responses, and providing advisories to the flight crew of the vertical separation from intruders. There are two levels of advisories. TAs. Traffic advisories indicate the range, bearing, and relative altitude of the intruder to aid in visual acquisition of the intruder. A traffic advisory is defined as an intruder aircraft entering the caution area 35 to 45 seconds from the TCAS collision area. Note, a visual search is recommended to prepare for intruder avoidance. RAs. Resolution advisories indicate what vertical maneuver must be performed or avoided to assure safe separation. A resolution advisory is given for an intruder aircraft entering the warning area 20 to 30 seconds from the TCAS collision area. Note, prompt action is required to avoid the intruder. If the intruding aircraft is also equipped with TCAS, the two systems can communicate their mutual intentions for an avoidance maneuver through the Mode S transponders. Mode A transponder-equipped intruders result in detection and display of traffic advisories only. Intruders not equipped with a transponder are invisible to the TCAS. The TCAS consists of the following components and associated controls. A directional antenna located on top of the aircraft. An omnidirectional antenna located on the bottom of the aircraft. The TCAS computer is mounted in the forward avionics bay. In the cockpit, the TCAS modes are selected through the MCDU and the TCAS functions are selected on the multifunction display by the cursor control device. The CCD and the multifunction display together make up the TCAS virtual controller. To select the radio page, First, push the radio function key on the MCDU. From there, push the line select key next to the TCAS transponder label in order to access the TCAS transponder page. The line select key 1L shows the TCAS and transponder modes. To select the desired mode, this select key has to be pressed as required until the desired mode is displayed in green. The modes are mutually exclusive. Leaving the detail page is self-explanatory. Note, on the radio page, pushing the lower left line select key allows toggling between standby and the previously selected TCAS transponder mode. Two mutually exclusive display formats are available on the MFD. A TCAS map overlay format and a TCAS zoom format. To access them, operate the CCD as follows. Push the respective format location button to select the MFD. Via the touchpad, position the cursor to the map soft key and open the pull down menu by pushing the enter button. Selecting the TCAS checkbox overlays the TCAS format onto the map format and displays the TCAS data box in the top half of the MFD. Push the TCAS soft key to open the TCAS virtual controller and then use the CCD to operate its controls.
Note, all selections on the TCAS virtual controller apply to both formats. The mode selected via the MCDU is also displayed on the MFD. For the overlay format, the mode is displayed in the TCAS data box. For the zoom format, it is shown on the right side of the display. The following TCAS mode enunciations are displayed on the MFDs and PFDs. TCAS off indicates TCAS off and also indicates standby. TCAS test indicates functional test. TCAS fail indicates TCAS system failure. TA only indicates traffic advisory only mode. TCAS RA fail indicates resolution advisory mode failure. TA RA indicates a valid indication that the computer is in TARA mode. The TCAS modes use color-coded symbols and data tags to map air traffic and locate threat aircraft on the two display formats. The symbols are explained as follows. A solid red square represents a resolution advisory, RA. A resolution advisory is given for an intruder aircraft entering the warning area 20 to 30 seconds from the TCAS collision area. A solid amber circle is used for a traffic advisory, TA. A traffic advisory is defined as an intruder aircraft entering the caution area 35 to 45 seconds from the TCAS collision area. A solid cyan diamond stands for proximate traffic. PT. Proximate traffic are aircraft within a range of 6.5 nautical miles and plus or minus 1,200 vertical feet. A hollow cyan diamond symbolizes other traffic, OT. OT can be any transponder replying aircraft not classified as an intruder or proximate traffic and within plus or minus 2,700 feet vertically and within the range of the display. Display of other traffic is inhibited during traffic advisories and resolution advisory. Note, each type of advisory is accompanied by a corresponding RO message generated by the TCAS computer and announced via the flight deck speakers. Traffic. Traffic. A data tag gives more detailed information about a threat aircraft. It always appears in the same color as the advisory. On the virtual controller, when relative altitude mode is selected, a two-digit number displays the relative altitude difference in hundreds of feet. In absolute altitude mode, a three-digit number displays the flight level. A positive altitude is then displayed with three digits, but a negative altitude is displayed with two digits followed by a negative sign. When the number is placed above the traffic symbol and preceded by a plus sign, it represents an intruder above the TCAS aircraft. Placed below the traffic symbol and preceded by a minus sign, it represents an intruder below it. Note, absolute altitude is replaced with relative altitude whenever an RA or TA condition is encountered. The ABS mode is deselected or 15 seconds after ABS mode is selected. A vertical up arrow will be placed to the immediate right of the traffic symbol if the intruder is climbing in excess of 550 feet per minute. A down arrow represents an intruder descending in excess of 550 feet per minute. Traffic advisories and resolution advisories are always displayed on TCAS map overlay or TCAS zoom formats. Traffic. 
traffic. When the TCAS detects an RA condition where certain ranges of vertical speed are not recommended, preventive RA, one red trapezoidal avoidance zone is displayed. When the TCAS detects an RA condition and a maneuver is recommended to increase the vertical separation, corrective RA, descend, 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 one or two red trapezoidal avoidance zones, and a green rectangular fly-to zone are displayed. The resolution advisories are also displayed on vertical speed indicator. The following warning inhibits should apply automatically for TCAS operation. No increased descent commands are issued at altitudes less than 1450 feet above ground level. When aircraft is descending, or at altitudes less than 1,650 feet when aircraft is climbing. No descent commands are issued at altitudes less than 1,000 feet when the aircraft is descending, or at altitudes less than 1,200 feet when the aircraft is climbing. No resolution advisories are issued at altitudes less than 900 feet when the aircraft is descending, or at altitudes less than 1,000 feet when the aircraft is climbing. No traffic advisories are issued when the intruder altitude is less than 380 feet. No aural advisories are issued at altitudes less than 400 feet when the aircraft is descending and for altitudes less than 600 feet when the aircraft is climbing.